What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Bullets, Barbells, and Barbecue. I'm your host, Brett. Chris Yards, formerly known as Heavy C, is not here. Multiple surgeries. Matt is here. He survived. <laughs> Matthew unbroken. Yeah. He survived his... <laughs> the unfixable. His fourth <laughs> surgery this calendar year. Or no, that's just, just year, to, the year to date, right? Because when did you have your shoulders done? That was not this year. No, but was it in the end of 23? Are we in like a 12-month span? Uh, it might be a 12-month span. It was... June last year that I did, I think June last year I did. Was the first shoulder? Yeah, first one. And then you did the second one? Maybe in September last year. So we're pretty close to... And then we have <coughs> the bicep. <laughs> yep. So we're pretty close to four surgeries in yeah. 12 months. We'll go 14 months. Yeah. You're the reason I pay so much for health insurance. You're welcome. I got to keep my wife employed and I appreciate it, everyone. Yeah. And then we have Tanner the head here. The head. <laughs> We have our show partners, Elite Nutrition. Check them out at EliteNutritionOmaha.com. Use code B3 at checkout for 10% off. Or go to the store in Omaha or Lincoln and yell B3. Get a free shaker. We also have Rosewood Block, the best cutting boards and barbecue. Check them out at RosewoodBlock.com. Use code B3 at checkout for yes. 10% off there as well. Swell. 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 Um, we uh, we tried to do a live one before this. We don't know how this worked out, but either we way, may we'll, have been live, we may not have. Yeah, I don't know. we'll put it up. We and, were live uh, with ourselves. Yeah, we were, <laughs> we were here. You should have been. <laughs> um, I think we should talk about calories, the way people view calories, how they overemphasize or underestimate calories sometimes, or overthink them sometimes, or underthink them. Basically, they're just wrong, is what you're saying. I think that <laughs> when it's the extreme of either way, I think it can be hard or wrong to an extent. I think they, there's a general misconception that either increased activity or decreased activity has a huge swing on your total daily calorie need. And so people, like people will train, they'll go to the gym like, oh, that's like an extra thousand calories I can oh. eat, right? And so- Well, because they have like an Apple Watch or something that tells them, <laughs> right, which like I don't know look, the accuracy of- So if you look at like goruck.com, I think is the website, right? If you, they have a rucking calculator on there. So if you have, you can put in, your body weight, you put in some of your own metrics, you put in the weight of your rucksack, how fat, how far you went and how fast you went, and then it'll tell you what your calorie thing is. And so when I was doing the, for the, uh, the 75, 75 hard. hard, I was doing roughly, I think it was like two and a half, maybe, yeah, about two and a half miles in 45-ish minutes with anywhere from a 20 to 40 pound sack. And that was, it was telling me that that was worth anywhere from 500 to 700 calories yep. which seems like did you have to put your stats in to get that number um i don't remember well he had to put his i think i put my height and weight in oh I so think. at least there's yeah. some kind of stat they would have to have that they have to at least have your height and weight to right. know yeah. well i mean there's some calorie books out there that are like oh this activity burns this many calories and they don't really yeah like you hop on the treadmill and they're like, "Oh, hey, you, good job, you burned like 400 calories." I'm like, "Really?" Because how do you know? Yeah, how do you, how do you, how do you? Know we used to have these uh, these calorie books at 24 Hour Fitness that would tell you like different activities, and had yeah. vigorous sex in there. <laughs> <laughs> With another person or just yourself? It just said vigorous sex. <laughs> <laughs> was that by the minute or is that? I mean, it could have been by the hour. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, no way. Yeah. yeah, I was like, "Well, that's very interesting." Yeah. yeah. Uh, to your point, most people, if they're if they're trying to, if they want to lose weight, and I ask them how many, and they, you ask them how many calories they're eating, they're probably about fifty percent off. So if they think 50, they're eating like five zero. fifty, yeah, if they think they're eating two thousand, they're probably eating three thousand. Likewise, if I talk to some fifteen-year-old who wants to be big because he's six foot tall and weighs one hundred and fifty pounds, and I get those at the store all the time, they think they're eating three or 4,000 calories and they're probably eating 2,000 because they skip breakfast, they eat school lunch of about 27 calories, they don't eat anything, they go to football practice, they come home and they eat the house, right? <laughs> so they just view their whole day as they're eating the house time and that's probably 2,000, you know what I mean? So yeah. you are right, people get in their head the only way to really know what you're doing is you have to track. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying you have to track for months and years or whatever. But like, if you have a goal, I always tell people, you don't have to track, but if you have a goal, you should. 
right? If you have a goal, you should track. You should track your workouts. You should track your calories. You should track what's happening. You should track pictures. You should track measurements. Body fat percent. You should track as many data points as possible. And that way, you know, at the end of eight weeks, I did this and this is my result, right? Or I'm eating this and this is my result. If I'm just cruising, a lot of times when I tell people, like if they're like, want to do something, it's like, okay, track your food. Don't change anything. Don't be better. Don't be worse. Just track your food for a week, okay? And see what, see what you're eating. And then if you're eating 3,500 calories and you've been stuck for a long time, well, maybe that's your maintenance calories, <laughs> right? So we at least have some idea, you know? But yeah. uh, because, I mean, I can go through a bunch of science and I always build up cal- people's calories and I think I do a pretty good job on it. But what really matters is tracking and then results while tracking. Because no matter how educated of a guess I can make, no matter how much experience I have or you have or you have, the only thing that really matters is data points. Mm. And, and as many data points as possible is the key. Yeah, I, I think there's some over analyzation sometimes i think especially for in my opinion someone who is just like just getting into like they're overweight they just want to lose weight and i think sometimes they get too focused on the calories or like the macro they read and like sometimes i think eat less move more for someone who is like fairly severely overweight i shouldn't say fairly severely but they're like overweight. <laughs> I think sometimes, in my opinion, eat less, move more. It can be as, as simple start to it. You know what I mean? Like maybe, you know, when you, you know, instead of going to Taco Bell like six times a day, you cut it down to like four to start. Yep. And it, but I think that they just, they make it, which I think is where a lot of people quit. They get too hardcore in the beginning. It, it's to me, it's almost like, you ever heard like Dave Tate talk about like using anabolics and you can turn your ace card. And once you've turned your ace card, you don't have another card to turn Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i I think sometimes if you want to stay at it and not hate yourself right away going from like taco bell six times a day to like i eat 1400 calories and whatever grams of protein and this and this i think you're not gonna like it in the beginning and you're gonna burn yourself out of it i would say that most people kind of do what you're saying they do the eat less move more Mm -hmm. um and then they plateau and 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 that's that's what's nice because then you can bring in that you can either come talk to you yeah or they can start, that's where I think you can start fine tuning your macros or paying more attention to those at least, you know, like don't read some like bodybuilder or fitness influencers diet because it's probably not a diet you're going to lifetime sustain and or want to do. The most important, I mean, for most people, and I would say most people who are just generally trying to be healthy, you know, they're, they're working out, they may be overweight, they may be underweight, whatever, but they're just generally at least making an effort towards being healthy. It is small tweaks. Mm -hmm. You know, and one of the keys, and I like kind of joke around about this, like I think nuts are like the, like a key driver to failure. It's like the health food failure. Yeah. It's because (laughs) 20 cashews looked it up today, 20 cashews, let's just be honest. It's not even a handful, right? 14 grams of fat. Mm -hmm. Like how many handfuls of those cashews did you eat? Did you eat four? Because then we're working at 60 grams of fat right there. You know what I mean? An avocado. Yes. Healthy fat, blah, blah, blah. All fats, healthy or non healthy, have calories. <laughs> so, <laughs> an avocado, the small or a medium avocado, is 28 grams of fat. Like, make, make some guacamole at home. Right. You're going to put four to five to six of those. And if you put some oil in there, it's a little bit. But let's just say you didn't put oil in there. Let's just say you just smashed up four avocados <laughs> right. and, and you and your wife just ate, ate a bowl just in the guac you had a hundred and almost 120 grams of fat. And so you're talking about eating it with chips or you're talking about eating it? And then if you eat it with chips, you you have probably another. Even if you go back and you do this. Well, what else would you eat it with? Duh. I know, but like even if you do your avocado toast, right? Your your bougie avocado toast, half an avocado spread across two pieces of bread. So you're 14 grams of fat there. You have a couple eggs. That's another 10 grams of fat. So now you're up to 24. There's probably at least a gram or two in your bread. So now you're at 25, 26 grams of fat through just two pieces of toast egg and you're super low on protein and you have 14 grams of protein yeah and you have you have, no, you have virtually no protein and maybe you you know depending on the kind of bread you're probably sitting anywhere from 26 to 35 ish grams of carbs well that's like that can be like one of the small changes too like you know you hear the avocado but instead of the avocado if you really want to have chips and have chips and salsa yeah because salsa is like 
We was we, when I when I was at Twenty Four Hour, we had these like little exchange books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I wish I would have fucking stole like a bunch of them when I when I left there, because <laughs> it was really good at like, hey, instead of this, <clears throat> this is equal to and or around the same thing, right? But they had their list of free foods and like a basic salsa is pretty much a free food, you know. Yep. Let's get like a real sugary one. So like, instead of avocado and chips, use some salsa. That's like minimal to no calories in salsa and like if you if you're just worried about it like if you're not worried about it who cares but if you're worried about it i would measure your chips out and get a serving because i don't know about you but if i go to a mexican restaurant i can go through four baskets nobody has chips. just 14 chips no th like, like unless you take them out of the bag yes and you, you put them on a plate and then you put your stuff out like if you care that's what you have to do yeah right or that but that's but, that's the kind of stuff that can get away from you um, and so that's what, like, for most people, it's just like little teeny tweaks. Like, okay, let's just say you need 35 grams of protein for breakfast. Like, that's the kind of number you're shooting for. Okay, well, if you eat five eggs, you got 35 grams of protein. You also got 25 grams of fat. And you haven't picked up a carb yet. Right. Right? So you can easily swap that out for, like, if you're going to scramble your eggs, two eggs, and then make up the difference in egg whites. Just buy a carton of egg whites and use those. If you scramble them, you won't notice a difference. If you get two good yolks in there, it's a very minimal difference. And even with egg whites, if you throw some fucking pepper on there, they're not bad. Yeah, like, I just can't. I, I can't do egg whites by themselves. Yeah. I mean, I got to throw. I actually couple. used to mix them in protein shakes, do like half water, half <laughs> half uh, liquid egg whites, and then your protein powder, and it yeah. makes it a little creamier, actually. If you get the, the egg whites in the cartons, the, the pasteurized. pasteurized ones, you can just drink them. Like, it's a weird yeah. taste. But I used to do like, uh, back in the day, Muscle Farm had that like strawberry whatever <laughs> protein. Mm -hmm. And if you put it in there, it tastes like, a, like almost like a strawberry smoothie because the egg whites would thicken it up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. There was a, a video I meant to send to you guys I was watching about, about calories and kind of just worldwide calorie averages and stuff. And it was really interesting that across, like if you looked at us here, the three of us versus tribal folks in the Amazon who walk 10, 17 miles a day, right? Like our general calorie burn is pretty similar worldwide, right? It, it doesn't vary that much, even depending on activity. Now it's, they've adapted to that. Well, they're, they're, and they're smaller. And they're smaller and their body's more efficient yeah. at doing stuff. So it's just, it use a difference, but there's, they were, what it was translating to is like, as you go, like if you start doing the eat less, eat less, do more, right? As you do more, your body is trying to like balance itself out. So if you go for like a three hour run in the morning, your body's like, shit, we are tired. We don't have the fuel. Like we need to dial back. So your mind will try to steer you to do less throughout the day. So where you might stand for something, maybe you're going to sit when you would normally be like, oh, I'm going to take the stairs. Your body's like, ah. Uh, Let's take the elevator today. So, like, your body will will push you towards being more or being less, moving less to try to conserve so that your overall body movement and expend and your calorie expenditure remains similar. So it's it's just one of those things that keep in mind as you're going through, and if you're trying to just increase your activity, that be cognizant of all your motion right so if you're just like oh hey i went out and i did this run so i can just do whatever like well, all right well are you still moving as much as you were throughout the rest of the day right and that's actually you know we had dr jamie seaman on here and her big thing is they always take the stairs yep and she'll always post about that so anybody that follows her i mean that's kind of what she's talking about like same thing matt's talking about it's just extra calorie burn well <clears throat> i think a lot of us i mean i go to shields and i'm like the, me and me and nicole are the only two walking up the stairs yeah, like everyone's are. on the escalator yeah, yeah, yeah i'm on the fucking escalator yeah i'm going because <laughs> like matt said because you went for a i'm as efficient run. burning right now as some tribal guy walking everywhere so i don't know why i would want to <laughs> I, I i got into a habit of parking further away always take the stairs well, I park like, far away so some dickhead doesn't park next to me but still somehow there's some fucking dickhead park next to me yeah but yeah, I think the, the the ideas and thoughts of calories are very different to everybody and what they think it is and like how precise sometimes yeah. people think they need to be yeah, with well, their like calories. The more specific your goal, the more specific your tracking and your calories and everything need to be. And I I think I don't I don't I don't think Drew would mind me saying this, but he's been using the RP app to kind of like cut down this year and he got to a point where he kind of plateaued plateaued in the RP app, cut his I think it cut his carbs by like. They always cut the carbs like fucking crazy amounts. But it cut it. Out. No, it cut it like 15 a day, 15, 20 grams of carbs a day. And then over the course of that week, he was still down a pound and his body looked tremendously different. And he stayed like that for another week and his body changed. And then it was like, okay, cut. I think it cut like five grams of fat or something like that. And then again, it changed. 
but so it's like as you get more refined like you can make these little tweaks and you just you're going to see this different but the only way you can make those little tweaks is if you've hacked off the big chunks and you've made those those changes to get to a spot where like you're more dialed in and you have that better understanding well and for most people they're just looking to look i hear it all the time i just want to look like i work out <laughs> i just want to look like i work out yeah you know they're, they're not trying to get on stage you know, right. they, they, they just want to, they want to put a tank top on and have some, have some arm definition. They want to wear shorts and be able to see a quad. You know, it's, it's nothing. It, the, the people aren't looking for the moon and the stars for the most part. They want to be healthy. They want to, you know, be able to move and be around for their kids and, you know, do stuff like that. And most of the time is just like you trying to figure out what your calorie burn is, is kind of tough. Right. But it is at the end of the day, it's just a math problem. Right. And I think a lot. you know that though. Like if, if you just track what you eat for a week or two, like there it is. You don't have to do any math. Yeah. Like that just that just tells you what you need to eat. And and then what what happened? <laughs> if right. you if you put on a pound over that week, you probably ate about five hundred calories more per day than you needed to. Divide it out. Yeah. If you lost a pound, you probably ate about five hundred calories less than your burn. There you go. And then at least you have an idea. Yeah. And then you can tweak it. And you know, I always and it's funny because you get people going through, and to your point, the more specific your goal, the more specific your tracking and needs have to be. It's like everyone will get down to that percent that they that their goal was. I want three more percent. All right. Well, you're going to have to step it up. Uh, I, what do you mean? <laughs> I don't want to doubt that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, we're just making choices, right? Just choices. That's the reason why I love tracking. And always... Like once you are tracking and what you're trying to like hit a number, like take that week, just track your food. Don't change anything. I know it's really hard to. And be honest. If you drink 27 beers on Friday night. Put it in there. <laughs> and don't just like, oh, I would have ate a double cheeseburger, but I'm tracking it. So I'm going to eat a grilled chicken. Just put what you eat in there. Just right. do whatever. But then once you have numbers and then you're tracking to hit those numbers, always log it first. It's so easy. Just what are you going to eat? Log it first because it's easy to make a little change and get rid of a whole shit ton of fat, right? We can, right? We, but it's impossible to take it back out after you put it in your mouth. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that, like Matt said, it's kind of like, you know, st start out like simple to take the big chunks. I mean, like, look at like a, a sculptor, right? They're going to fucking just blast off big ass chunks before they get real defined in what they're doing. You know what I mean? Like, they're going to knock out huge chunks in the easiest way possible. Just like very, you know what I mean? Swinging fucking sledgehammers, knocking shit off. And then when they're going to start, they've gotten down to close to the size they want. Now they're going to get out their chisels. And you know what I mean? They're going to start doing very precise work. And diet's like kind of the same way. Well, when I first, when I was 25, I, I just had it. I looked, I stepped on my buddy's scale. Like we were over there drinking. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I looked down. I'm like, yeah, I'm too young to be this fat. <laughs> and literally the only thing I did to start off. But with, it's probably the only time your head looked normal for your body. It looks pretty normal now. Yeah, yeah you should have seen me at 185. Well, that's worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's worse. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad. Um, but the only thing I did was I got rid of French fries, pop, and donuts. Oh yeah, you see people like you. I'm sure you've had somebody, and I haven't yeah. the past. Like, well, you know, I start like, well, what do you, what do you do? You know, they tell you, and then I'm like, okay, how about you just like not drink pop for like a week, or switch to like a diet pop here and there. Well, I would go to Burger King and I would get two Whoppers. I just wouldn't get fries and I wouldn't get the drink. Yeah, okay? like I, I, I did like right. I, I was I wasn't That's probably eating like 800 calories that you're cutting out. Probably but, more. But people don't realize, especially and you but know, it's that, like you know. 32 oh, Jesus, yeah. yeah like you, the drinks there aren't yeah. 12 ounces you but, know what I mean you know, like, like, no and, ice I want more pop and like you guys are, I mean yeah light ice obviously but for <laughs> but uh, but liquid calories are always a weird one because it tricks your mind out you know what I mean you're not they're like oh well I don't feel full but I just drank like fucking right. 400 so, calories like, calorie drinks are just so I've, I've had clients in the past they just stopped drinking regular pop and they're like oh I lost like five pounds this week and I was like I bet yeah you were drinking well, at 12, like 150 calories in like a 12 ounce can. 200. 200. Like 180 to 200 calories. And same thing with people drinking monsters all the time. And dude, monster crushes it with their fucking zeros. Yeah. I mean, they're, but they're like a regular monster, 16 ounce can. Some of those are like 200 plus the, calories. The, the coffee ones are 220, 250. Same yeah, thing I mean, like that's, black rifle. Well, coffee, no, so. uh, isn't that per serving? And a serving is, eight, is like, I think it, monster. Well, I think the regular monsters one okay. can is a serving at least on the. Yeah. I, th I thought it was like twelve, like yes, it was like a twelve ounce that serving. Like the there's one serving point a sixteen ounce can. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's just little stuff like that, you know. And like, you know, you take five hundred calories out a day. 
So one that I found I found interesting and I read different stuff on it is like the calorie content of alcohol. Because I think it's right, a gram of alcohol is seven. seven. Is it seven calories? But it's like the calories that come from alcohol are weird. Like your body can't do anything really with them, right? No. It, they're, so in most of your macro tracker apps, they won't even count alcohol calories. They, they're like... Even though we know it, yeah. you put you put like a shot of vodka in, and you you get zero calories. But they do definitely have calories. Yeah, but it has calories in it. But it, the, the calories can still. That's why the whole sugar alcohol, alcohol thing. Yeah, they but, weren't counting those on as carbs. Sugar alcohols yeah. in, and if anyone's ever eaten like one of those like high sugar alcohol like protein bars, and then you have to like shit your pants like 13 <laughs> minutes later. That is yeah. it. It's over a three. I think one of the one of the things that I was reading about alcohol, like I think it was during the 75 hard, um, was that like and everyone kind of knows like alcohol is Poison. essentially a toxin to your body, but like when you ingest it, your body will treat it like like a snake bite, right? Like if you got bit by a snake and you've got venom running through your veins, like the body's like, oh shit, this is poison. Like I have to get rid of this. So even if you, <clears throat> even if you only have a small amount of alcohol and your goal is to lose weight, your body is going to divert energy to get rid of this alcohol. And it's not going to be trying to burn off fat. It's not going to be trying to build muscle or do anything productive. It looks at this alcohol as a poison and will divert energy to get rid of that first. So it like puts all of your productivity on halt while it's trying to get rid of alcohol. Well, in like six to eight drinks, some people call that a bender, some people call that Tuesday. It's like more than three, I think, was a bender. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, like, like, like this Budweiser, a 12 ounce can is 145 calories. Yeah. And you're like, oh man, I drank like a six pack last night. Cool, yeah. that's like almost 900 calories you drank. Well, and then six to eight, six to eight drinks of alcohol um, will lower your testosterone rate by about 40% by 40% for up to 48 hours. So if you're like, getting down for like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, like you get your testosterone back somewhere around Wednesday and then you're starting over again. Yeah. Right in time to hop back on the booze. <laughs> yep. wagon. Yeah. So it's just the watching the calories that we're keeping track of it, but also when you're just starting Ooh. out, like I said, just make small changes. Don't jump on and, Oh, I read so-and-so's diet plan that they do. And I was like, yeah, you're, you're going to hate it a weekend and you're not going to do it. So, and that's, that's why, like what I say is most people who are trying to be healthy is just little tweaks. And yeah. I, I, I like to, when someone comes in, I will talk to them and I'll have them walk me through their day, right? And then I will just tweak their, the, their day into something that fits, fits their calories, fits their macros. Um, the thing about macros that a lot of people, like protein is, is protein is probably your most important macro. If you're, it is your most important macro if you're trying to build. It's also the one if you focus on the most, it's really hard to overeat anything else. It becomes harder to overeat if you're getting your protein in. Mm -hmm. you know. And when health guidelines say 75 grams of protein is all you need, understand that's for survival and not to be optimal. <laughs> so if you're trying to maintain or build muscle, um, and you're relatively within a, a decent weight range, it's about a gram per pound. Yeah. Like, it's about a gram per pound. And I, I always tell clients when they're first getting into it, just try to shoot for 100 grams of protein a day. It's a good goal to start. Because it's, it's, to some people, it's like the end of the world, they think, to try to get to 100 grams of protein. Yeah, I get that before I get to the store. I know. But again, like I said, these are people, if you're new right. to, we're wa like watching nutrition and you want to look at, try to ha hit 100 grams of protein and try to drink like a gallon of water in a day. Yep. And that'll get you moving in the right direction. But it's with like protein, weightlifting, and hormones or anabolics are the only three things that like make you like in that anabolic state. Yep. Right? Like nothing else. Like carbs won't carbs won't build or promote muscle or save muscle. Fat won't do it. But like those three things will. But like just this the simple fact of eating protein triggers your body to be in kind of this anabolic state where it's like, huh, I got all this protein. I should probably do something with it. It's pretty nifty. Well, and if you're lifting weights, you're, you're well, lifting weights is actually a catabolic event. Yes. It's actually breaking you down. Yes. But it sends a signal to build. Yep. Right. But you, that signal is to increase your muscle protein synthesis. So it goes up. So if you eat more protein, you're going to, I mean, eat more protein during that window. That's why it's going up is so it can utilize the protein and you're repairing before you build. So if you want to build muscle, you better eat and you have to eat enough to repair first 
and then build. That's why I think protein is the most important. However, carbs for your energy levels, like <laughs> low carb is hard. And I think mm-hmm. the most dangerous one is just a high protein diet because you're sitting there with like not enough carbs for like your glycogen, right? Not enough carbs for your, to, to run as your primary energy source. And you're not in keto because you don't have enough fat to be in keto. So you're kind of in this no man's land of trying to turn protein into glucose. Really not easy. Super inefficient. Yeah. <laughs> really inefficient. You know, so like a balanced diet, like there is no reason. Now understand, like you said, influencers, the only way that influencers make money is if you click. Saying common sense, simple things isn't a really good way to get clicks. I have to be crazy. I have to be over the top. I have to say something that is, I mean, look at all these stupid exercises or like, oh, let's try this rep scheme out. That rep scheme makes zero sense. Your combination makes zero sense. Changing your workout every week makes zero sense. You're better off. You could do, you, you would have more success if you did the same, the same movements trying to increase reps and weights over time for a year than mixing up your workouts. Like you're going to have more success. Your body repeated bout effect. You have less chance of injury. You're going to understand it. Changing your workouts all the time, but that's influencers have to get clicks. They don't have to have your best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah. A balanced diet, I think just the best way to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's done. Like I've done, I've done keto and I really, I liked it, but I don't, I don't think you can, you can't stay on it forever. Like it's just, I don't know anyone that stayed on it for a long term. Was your breath really bad? Maybe. Smelled like dick. (laughs) That wasn't from keto. Yeah. (laughs) I think a big thing with diet too is, is slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. Like you don't have to be extreme. If you're the person that's like, oh, my friend got on this diet and they lost like 20 pounds in one week. And I was like, yeah, you guess how fast they're going to gain that weight back. And let's just let's just say you come in and you weigh three hundred and fifty pounds, okay? And and we clean up your diet. Like you may lose ten to fifteen pounds real quick, just water weight and you know bloat. And it, like if you went from eating a, a bunch of crappy food and then you weren't drinking as much water and we were holding a bunch and now you're drinking water and your food's cleaner, like you could lose a bunch. But it takes about a week to burn a pound of fat. Okay, it takes about a week. It takes about a month to build a pound of muscle, (laughs) right? So any of these quick changes that you see are probably water fluctuations. Mm -hmm. Um, And so if you lose five pounds in a week, chances are you couldn't lose much more than a pound of a pound of fat. I mean, maybe more. I mean, I'm not saying you, it's a, it's, it's a weak solid. I mean, some people might be able to do more than that, but it's kind of in that range. That's why I like the 500 calorie deficit. It's one pound, like one pound a week is hard because it's only one pound a week, but over a course of a year, it's 52, right? And if you grab a pound and a half, you know, now we're, now we're in the seventies, you know? So like that kind of steady, like you said, slow and steady wins a race. And then it's not going to come back on. Like if you do something drastic and you go back to normal, it's all coming back on it more. And if you lost muscle, you slowed your basal metabolic rate. So it's going to come on faster. And do also you, do you encourage people to do f- pictures along with the scale. I encourage them to do the pictures for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. Them, yeah. And I think also Big. people need to remember that if you're if you're already a smaller person and you want to kind of lean out or just lose some weight, don't be disappointed in like a quarter to a half a pound a week. Right. I mean, I have to remember, you can't look at the person that weighs like 400 pounds because they're going to drop fucking mad weight fast. Yep. Because them just walking into elite nutrition is going to fucking burn four more, four times more calories than you are yep. just carrying their body. But yeah, so these people, if you're already in like pretty decent, you know, pretty good shape, and don't always be like, I just want to have a six pack. You probably don't. Most of those people who have six packs all the time, you probably don't want to live that lifestyle. Number one. And number two, some people just have good genetics for six packs. They have a, a leaner, flatter stomach sometimes. But just be 100% realistic in what you want to do and how you want to live your life. And like, I've just been encouraging people like, you can be in good shape and just ex- like, it's okay to say, hey, I, f- I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. I just want to be better. Mm-hmm. Like, two things can be true at once. You know, I, I, I hate like, well, we're kind of talking about like, I bench 435, <laughs> not 450, right? I could say, well, I'm a fucking bitch because I can't get 450. Or I can say, well, I have 435, but I really want 450. Like there's a difference in your mindset. Yeah. And that mindset is going to drive, the, the defeatist mindset is going to make you quit. 
right? You're not going to get there. Okay. Accepting that you can be in a good spot and want more, I think this is a healthier way to go. Yeah, and, and like Tanner with the weight training thing talking, the getting stronger, the stronger you get, the harder it gets to get stronger. The leaner you get, the harder it gets to get leaner. So those are going to be smaller measurements. And you just got to remember that. You're not doing something wrong. It just takes time. The leaner it is and whatever you're trying to do. But chasing that, that's what makes it fun. That's why, like, in the gym, as far as working out, you'll see people drop off when the beginner gains or, you know, their numbers aren't moving like they want them to or it takes them a year to add five pounds to the to their squat or to their bench, you know, like... It's just all part of the game. Well, and then, Matt, you said something earlier about, like, taking pictures. Understand that your overall health and your improvement is a combination of five, six, seven different things. How are you feeling? How do your clothes fit? How do you look – how do you feel like you look in – like, you when you look in the mirror? What do your pictures look like? You know, like, how's your – how are your workouts going? What does the scale say? Right? It's like one of six. So if you got five of them going for you and that scale's not moving right away, you're moving in the right direction. That it'll catch up. Sometimes I tell people like that. I feel like my scanner is like two weeks behind. Like you're like, you know, like I can see it. Like I know that I'm doing something, but it's like, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, well that scan now makes sense. It's like a couple weeks behind body waters. You have to understand like body waters change weight. Like it's just not all the same. Um, and then you were just saying about like beginner gains, right? Like physiologically there are beginner gains, mm -hmm. like your muscle protein, like, like for us, we've been trained. Well, not Matt, but because you don't train. I get um, beginner games all over. <laughs> you, can, you would. <laughs> but like for us who've been training for a long time, you you have this like six hour window where it's like your muscle protein synthesis is drastically increased from 100, if it's 100% to like 300%, right? 200, 300%. Well, when you just start training, that's a 24 hour, you know, increase uh, of a drastic increase. And then both, all of us will settle down for 48 hours or so where it's elevated. Um, but yeah, you do have that beginner gains. Especially if you start it when you're like, start training when you're like 16, 17 years old. So you have massive testosterone. Yeah. And then you have the beginner gains on top of that. That's, that's where it gets real crazy. So it's like, especially if you've been training for a long time and then you're developing a new goal, <laughs> like the, you're already trained. Yeah. You know, like you don't get beginner gains. Mm -hmm. Like, so you're going to like Drew, I've seen Drew's progress over the course. Of, like it's been slow and steady. And then all yeah. of a sudden you see people like, damn. Right. right. He's, he's made a lot of changes, but those, those, that takes a, even more consistency. The more you've trained and the more you've worked out and the more you've done it, it takes even more consistency to do it. And that's, that's what you think. That's how I would say you find out who's really in it to win it. Yeah. You know, right. as soon as it gets harder, you're going to drop off. Yeah. Right, like, I mean, a, Drew looks like he beat AIDS. That's what he looks like. You know, so, <laughs> right. But it's also like, what are you trying to get to? Like, right. If you're just trying to, if you're trying to get down and you really want to get lean and jacked and have a six pack and stuff like the, the, Effort to reward curve is not linear for this, right? It starts to go up, or your effort starts to go up significantly more than your gains that you're getting from it and stuff. So where's that life balance of like, do I want to measure every single thing that I eat, not have ice cream with my friends or kids or, or avoid all this stuff so I can have that physique? Or do I want to do that for a week so I can look good on like for the weekend for some pool thing. And then like I can go back to a, a balanced thing where, yeah, I don't have a six pack all the time, but I feel pretty fucking good. My clothes fit well. And that's right. So pick your actual life lifestyle. Don't like, I want to, you know, we got like Drew's picture. I want to have a fucking a six pack like Dober. I, I'm not going to train like Drew does. Yeah. I mean, Drew's a professional athlete. You know, he gets, that's what he does for a living. I'm not trying to have a six pack. I well, just want to, I'm like an 80 percenter. But again, I'm going to eat good like 80% of the time, but I ain't fucking Culver's there's today. There's phenomenal photos of any, any Olympia winner, like bodybuilder, right? Like Jay Cutler, there's some fantastic photos when he was bulking. And he just has like this giant plastic bowl of cereal that he's eating. And his cheeks are super fat. Like he can barely get his arms to like eat the bowl because he's so huge and bloated. Like, yeah, he looks, he looks strong, but he doesn't look jacked at all. And then you look at him when he's on stage six weeks or six months later, just fucking shredded veins and all that. So, I mean, even those people who, like, you have these huge extremes, like, no one, very, very, very few people are walking around just fucking yoked, shredded, and veiny all the time. But, like, if you want a six pack and you want to go for it, you just have to put a lot of sacrifice yep. into it. And if you touch it, cool, and you got it, and you're like, hey, that was awesome. I did it. And then you want to back off to a four pack or what, well, you know, just whatever like then you just make that choice like how much how much do i want this 
and by yeah. balance. But like, don't be a fucking idiot bodybuilder either. Like, please, like if you have gone through and you have lost 50, 60 pounds doing it the right way, please don't put it back on because the second time around is 10 times harder. Yeah. Like it is because the first time, the first time you go through your, your journey, right? Your weight loss journey or whatever, you have no idea what the end's going to look like and how long it's going to take to get there and how much work you had to put in. Right. So you're just, you're just walking, you're just taking steps. You're just taking steps and you're going along this journey. And then one day you're like, damn, I've lost 70 pounds. I look good. I feel good. If you let yourself put that 70 or 80 or whatever pounds back on and you do it again, you know the process now. That is 10 times the mental challenge when you know it took you a year and a half last time and you know all the sacrifice you had to make to get there and you know all the work you had to put in. It is all, it, I have very rarely seen someone do it twice. And that's why bodybuilders are so crazy and that's it's a mental game. I tell everybody, bodybuilding is a mental game. One hundred percent. Like, I mean, Ronnie Coleman has probably one of the funniest ones where he like takes a box of like one of the tubes of oatmeal, right? Dumps it in this bowl, mixes it up, sits down on the couch, and he's eating it with a wooden spoon, and he falls asleep. And he falls asleep like mid bite, and like they're just filming him, and like five minutes later, he's like, <laughs> comes back up and just starts eating again because he knows like he's got to get this food down. Yeah. And he's huge and bloated, like it's off season, but it's just. But not many people can do that. No, God, because no. it is so terrible. It's so much work it's all the a time. Four hour a day gig, like, and you're putting your body through hell. Yeah, being that lean and that, like, it's, yeah, it's just not. Yeah, it's rough. <clears throat> yeah, I think our our overall message is just take your time if you're first getting into it. Yeah. And if you've been in it for a while, don't. I mean, you're doing great. Half pound, quarter pound. Yep. Whatever, if it's so, and you might have a week where it might be up a little bit too, but that doesn't mean you just fuck it. I think I think photos and, and scale are the two like those two things go hand in hand. But I think just even like especially like females, I think if your clothes fit better, that's a big one right. for them too. You can have the clothes fitting better and stuff, but like it, like like you said a number of times, the scale might not move, but you might wake up and you're like, whoa, huh, I look pretty good. Or maybe even the scale goes up a pound, but you're like, actually, I think I look pretty fucking good today, right? I do pictures with the lights completely off. <laughs> those are the best. Like, I look like Ronnie Coleman. Yeah, but I think those two things. <laughs> <laughs> I think those two things hand in hand, like that. Those things work really well to keep going because one of them is going to generally keep moving forward. And don't yeah, weigh yourself yeah. every single day. I think that's a hard one yeah, for I a mean, lot of people too. You, yeah, you can, but you can't like wake up one day and be like, "Oh shit, I went up a pound." Like for me, just overnight. Five to eight pounds. Depending I would say on like water. a Friday morning. You've had a good week of dieting or eating right. Wake up, dehydrated, naked. Weigh yourself. Yeah. I like Monday, Thursday, or Monday, Friday. Like, I think there's a little bit of punishment. Weighing yourself on Saturday morning is probably not your best move. <laughs> or Monday. Yeah. Right. Well, you can. Like when I did, long, long time ago when I when I worked with Nikki, like that was my weigh in was Saturday morning. Or sorry, I meant Sunday morning. Oh, I meant, Sunday, sorry, I meant yeah. Sunday morning. Yeah. So I did it Saturday morning because then it really just gave me. You could only fuck around Saturday night. Yeah, I could only fuck around Saturday night because then Sunday was like, all right, you're back on the wagon, you're prepping and stuff like that. So it was just an elimination. So I did a I did a Saturday and Monday. So really, it was just like one night of potential debauchery, but then you could come back. And yeah, I think I think so. The real key is being patient. Track your food, like Tanner said. Keep track of it. And, and patience. And just for the females listening, you have a lot of different hormone things happening. So your scale and your water and things like that can alter a lot, dep depending on the time of the month, depending on just hormones, depending on a lot of different things. So like, once again, that's where it's more important. Hey, yes, I feel a little bloated today. Yes, like I'm starting next week, but I my workouts are feeling good, and like, like you, that's where you have to rely on some other things because a week a month you're probably going to be off. Sorry. And like, what's that? What's that old saying? Comparison is the killer of the thief of joy. The thief of joy. Yeah, don't compare yourself, especially like, oh, so and so lost like forty pounds on this diet. Yeah, you know what? But they're probably going to gain at least thirty of it back. If they if you lose it fast, it's going to come back fast. Yeah. That's why you look at any lifter. They're doing a dramatic water cut right before because they want all that weight back right away. They're not like, well, I'm going to diet for 16 weeks leading up to my meat so I can hit my fucking... No. 
if I'm competing at 240, I'm going to weigh like 270 up until like the week of and hopefully bring it down. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so but yeah, don't don't compare yourself to somebody else. You're doing your battle. Yeah. It's your it's your battle and it's I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to get harder the longer you do it. And the the longer the longer you're successful at it, the harder it's going to be, but that's everything in life. Yep. So, but yeah, don't stress about every single calorie, especially when you're first getting into it. Like I said, if you're a sculptor, you got to knock the big chunks off first before you get the fine detail down. You know, and if you're not sure what to do, you can go out to Elite Nutrition, talk to Tanner. Um, they can get you in the, the right the direction. Um, or if you just need something like, I was talking to a client this morning, MyFitnessPal is like a really good app as far as if you... Apparently, it's not free at all anymore. It is. Oh. I just saw it this morning. Oh. Like, you just have to what? click the X on the thing. Oh. It comes up and wants you to pay. You click the X. It has a lot. Of, like, you can't scan the barcodes anymore, I don't think, oh, and all really? that shit. Oh, you have to pay for that. That's some horse shit. But you can still, you can't get macros. Yeah. You can get the macros. I, I No, it doesn't, like, you can't set them or... Oh, but it'll show you, you the macros you're eating. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, for a basic one, I mean... And they do a lot. They have a lot of stuff on there. So if they did charge, I mean, it I doesn't surprise me. I think it was like 50 bucks a year or something. But yeah, if you're, if you, you know, if you're not, a, you know, you don't know if you want to commit to, you know, working with somebody, at least use that to, to log it all. You know what I mean? And just start that way. And if you, if you haven't worked out, start by walking. You don't have to come to a gym. You can walk, you can do push ups. you can do squats, you can do things at your house and, you know, but start with that and like, you just got to keep going. That's all it is. Like Ice Cube said, life ain't a track meet, it's a marathon. You know? It's got to, it's, it's, nothing, nothing super easy is really that fun to get. Right. You guys got anything else? All right, guys, thanks for listening. Uh, if you got a goal, chase it down. Try to be a little less shitty every day. Like, subscribe, share, follow. We'll see you next time. <laughs>